the inception of the trial um, started after we had, as a community, begun to see antigen escape as a mechanism of relapse post CAR T cell therapy. So our hypothesis was that dual antigen targeting may prevent or um, diminish the risk of antigen escape. So by simultaneously targeting uh, two antigens instead of one, we could disrupt the immune pressure regulation and um, somehow abate that down regulation of the targeted surface antigen. And so at this point, we had already had a CD19 trial that was complete, and then we have an ongoing CD22 CAR T cell trial. Um, thus, we use both SCFPs that we had used in our previous clinical trials and combine them into a novel bivalent uh, CAR T cell that targeted both 19 and 22. Sure, so um, as I said, it was built with those two SCFEs that had been tested um, as phase ones at the NCI. Um, it was built on a 4-1-BB backbone, so this is thought to be the more persistent or longer acting CAR T cell backbone. And our, our target was um, patients with multiply relapsed refractory hematologic malignancies. Um, we had used this model in um, the laboratory and animal studies demonstrated that there was a sign of safety, but also efficacy. And so we moved it forward in um, phase one dose escalation study. So the design is three plus three. The primary objectives are safety and toxicity with the secondary objectives being efficacy, our expansion and CAR T cell persistence. So to date, um, we have found that at all three dose levels, so we went from uh, three times 10 to the fifth all the way through three times 10 to the sixth, and we found that the CAR T cells were well tolerated with um, a reversible side effect profile, and patients did have responses. So to break it down a little bit further, um, we had, we've treated 13 patients to date, again at all three dose levels. The median age of our patient population was 19.6 years, and it was a very heavily pretreated population. So over 70% had prior CD19 targeted therapy and over 40% of the patients treated had prior CD22 targeted therapy. So this is a really um, heavily pretreated population and a, a, a targeted population that wouldn't really have much by way of um, next steps. And so um, in these patients, we found that the side effect profile was, as I said, um, very tolerable cytokine release syndrome grade three only occurred in um, two patients and that was managed by um, tocilizumab. And we had one patient who had a grade three uh, eye cancer neurotoxicity that quickly resolved after the initiation of steroids. And so our early experience is that it was um, clinically active. We had five patients have um, MRD negative complete remissions out of the 13. And most of those patients were um, CAR naive. We also found that high burden disease was associated with higher grade toxicity. So those two patients that had uh, grade three cytokine release syndrome um, also had significant disease burden and that responses are dose dependent. We didn't see any responses in the first dose level. Um, and so as we started to increase the dose levels, we started to see more uh, responses. Um, additionally, one of the interesting findings was that we had a lot of patients that had extramedullary disease and so disease outside of the bone marrow, uh, in addition to having disease in the bone marrow, and we did see discrepant results there. Um, so there was a potentially limited car trafficking to sites of extramedullary disease. And then um, finally, I think it's a little bit too early to, to touch on the antigen positive relapses, but we have seen pretty limited expansion so far in these um, patients, and we've seen limited persistence. And so I think that that is something uh, for future directions that we want to more closely explore is, um, you know, how can we better characterize the CAR T cell products um, and their functional properties and why are they not trafficking to extramedullary sites? Well, if our hypothesis is correct um, and we can diminish the risk of antigen escape, um, I think that it would be very useful to the field. Um, it's almost like multi-targeted chemotherapy. You're using instead multi-targeted uh, CAR T cells to try and outsmart the leukemia in a sense. Um, I feel as if sometimes we're just, you know, this is a novel therapy and so we may be playing catch up. I don't know that a lot of people in the community really thought about antigen escape, but 
as a mechanism of relapse before the first cases started to be published. Um, and so now I think it's time to try to get ahead. And so this may be a way to um, better equip our bodies uh, to, to really get rid of those clones that we're seeing now. So for this trial in, in general, um, we have an additional dose level that we may explore um, just to see if we can um, do better by way of car expansion and persistence. Um, well, we started intensifying the lymphodepletion also to try to um, overcome immune-mediated rejection uh, in patients that have had prior CAR T-cells. And um, again, evaluate the CAR T-cell products, um, what makes them work, what doesn't make them work, um, what are the functional properties of exhaustion, and, and how could we potentially use checkpoint blockade to augment CARs, especially in patients that have extramedullary disease and um, limited CAR T-cell expansion. Mm -hmm.